how can it be the case that uncertainty translates into knowledge? And at first glance, that's totally uh, paradoxical. But in the case of climate change, what happens is that we know enough to understand or to trace out what the implications of uncertainty are in the climate system. And when you do that, then you can tell that the greater the uncertainty, the more we should be worried. And we also know that the more greenhouse gases we emit, the greater the uncertainty about the future. So you can put these two things together, that greater uncertainty means greater risk, greater emissions mean greater uncertainty, and then we know something. We know that to reduce the risk, we have to reduce uncertainty, and to reduce uncertainty, you gotta cut emissions. So out of the uncertainty comes an impetus to deal with uh, climate change by reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Basically, the uh, issue was motivated by this conflict between what uncertainty, scientific uncertainty, actually implies about climate change and what people make of it. And so it's a collaboration between natural scientists and social scientists. And um, turning to the first issue, in actual fact, if you do the mathematics that result from uncertainty, then what you find is that the greater the uncertainty about the climate system, the greater uh, the risk, and the more we should be concerned about the future uh, of our societies and of the planet as a whole. If you then look at what people do, in the face of uncertainty. You find that they pretty much do the opposite of what they ought to do on the basis of the mathematics. So for example, people, when they're confronted with uncertainty, they tend to engage in wishful thinking. If I tell you that, well, climate change might be bad or it might be really, really, really bad, then people will say, oh, okay, it's just gonna be bad. They'll, they'll focus on one aspect of the um, distribution. And, and we know that from uh, a lot of research on how people perceive probabilities and how uncertainty opens them up to wishful thinking. The other thing that this issue is about is to constantly demonstrate in a variety of ways the link between uncertainty and knowledge how the presence of uncertainty, ironically, is actually telling us something that is exploitable knowledge. The question of what we are uncertain about is probably one of the most important ones to ask. And, and, and it's really important to be clear on this, because just because we have some uncertainty about some things doesn't mean that we don't know other things. But that is a little bit of a simple dichotomy. It's not just what we know and what we don't know. There's a whole spectrum between that. So, for example, we know that we're increasing carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere because of human activity. We know that will cause warming. How much warming has a certain range of uncertainty that depends upon how you model and how you constrain the data set. So, if we carry on as we are, we'll warm the planet anywhere between about 3 to 5 degrees by the end of the century. Well, that's uncertainty, and, and that range causes complications to us. But if we push further, how will that warming affect rainfall? Well, we know that the wet areas of the planet will get wetter and the dry areas get drier. But if we think about what will happen in England, or the Sub-Sahara, or the grain belt of the United States, then models don't agree. So the uncertainty is becoming larger and more problematic to decision makers there. Then if we carry on and think about biological systems, ecosystems, and how they will deal with the change in temperature, the higher CO2, ocean acidification, all of those factors together, then we are getting into very deep and profound, perhaps systemic uncertainty. So you can't say that there's a certain amount of uncertainty with any particular issue. It's rather a, a pyramid of uncertainty that as we propagate through the system becomes larger and larger and larger and more problematic. Some of the things that we care most about are water resources, our food production, those might be the things for which we are most uncertain. It depends on the type of uncertainty that you're talking about. One of the challenges that we face today is that we're changing the world such that all of the records, all of the knowledge, all of the data that we've accumulated throughout all of human civilization, certainly over the past several hundred years, 
are somewhat less relevant to understanding what might happen in the future. So of course, as the years go by and we accumulate more information and we learn more about how climate change is affecting the world, we'll be able to incorporate that into our models and we will be able to reduce uncertainty. But of course, at the same time, we're continuing on that journey, so we will have less time to respond and adapt to that uncertainty. No longer can we simply think about preventing floods by saying, oh, well, we're just going to build a flood wall this high. No, we should be thinking about flood walls that are built out of Legos, that you can make at different heights depending upon the need, that can move up and down dynamically. Or we could think about letting the land flood, but actually doing so in a resilient way that supports the community, supports the infrastructure, such that the flood is not as much of a problem as today. It requires a fundamental change and reimagining of our society and our infrastructure, but that's what we're going to have to do. Profound uncertainty is going to demand profound resilience and creativity and flexibility. Uncertainty, unfortunately, is, is a source of a multitude of different responses on the part of people. I've already mentioned that people engage in wishful thinking on the one hand, so if you tell them an outcome is uncertain, they automatically assume that, oh, okay, it won't be quite as bad as it could be. They always latch on to the best possible outcome and think that's what's going to happen. Um, but beyond that, we, we have other uh, implications of uncertainty. So, for example, people become more hesitant under conditions of uncertainty um, to recognize creativity and to accept a creative solution for what it is. Uh, there is some research that shows that. If you make people uncertain, then all of a sudden they are more likely to accept routine solutions, but not the creative ones that we might need to deal with the uncertainty and people tend to become more anxious, uh, aversive stimuli, things that you don't like tend to be amplified, they become more aversive if you're uncertain about what's going to happen. Um, so uncertainty is the source of a lot of responses in people, not all of which are productive and, and not all of which will help us solve the problem.